Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of Video Analytics 101. Today we're talking about redaction. What is it, what types there are, and how it works. All right, so what is redaction? Well, redaction is the process of removing any personal identifiable information from a media. In our case, in video surveillance, obviously that means typically a video or it could be even snapshots that we have from our CCTV footage and redaction is removing any personal identifiable information. Typically, of course, those are people and vehicles. And we use redaction to make them not visible anymore for the purpose of privacy protection and of course, to also comply to local data protection laws. So if we have a scene of people uh, walking in the street then redaction is really obscuring them and making them not identifiable anymore. So this is, this is really the, the core of redaction. And there are different types, but we go there later. One thing to clarify though, um, there is a feature for a long time on cameras called masking or static masking, where you draw a mask on the video image on the camera. And it's really burned in. And typically it's a black square that you burn in. This is not redaction because redaction, as I mentioned, is really about hiding personal identifiable information of people and vehicles. And those are the objects that typically like to move around. So a static mask doesn't help you a lot. So I wouldn't consider this redaction. Redaction is really doing this for people as they move through a scene. Um, they are not identifiable anymore, but everything else is visible. And if you look at the video, you can still see all the actions and everything that's happening. So this is really what we mean by redaction. So let's take a look at two different kinds of redaction. First, there is real-time redaction. And this is really the case where you have an operator monitoring a scene and we are redacting people or vehicles live as it happens. So we are obscuring everybody in the image so the operator cannot see these, uh, identify these people anymore. But in case something is happening, there might be a way to unlock the original video, for example, with a four eyes principle with the okay of a supervisor for example. So this is really live. It's, it's as it happens um, when you're doing video monitoring. And a distinction, um, and this is very important because it's a totally different kind of technology that you need if you have, really have to make sure that you are redacting as it happens live. And then there's the second type, which is on-demand redaction. And this is the process of doing redaction while you're exporting a video. So typically this could be when you found a, uh, an evidence that you want to share with the public or somebody else where you need to make sure that the privacy of uninvolved individuals is protected, but you still might, might want to show the perpetrator. And the big advantage of doing it after the fact is that it could be a semi-automatic process where the user chooses which people should be redacted and which people should not be redacted. So really identifying the perpetrator and the perpetrator would not be hidden in the video, but everybody else's privacy would be protected. So it's a completely different use case than real-time redaction because you're doing it after the fact when you export the video. And these two different types also define the technology you need in order to do this. For real-time redaction, it's typically motion detection that you use because motion detection is so robust that you are, can be pretty sure that everybody in the video is really um, redacted in real time as it happens. Because since you have to do it live, you have to make sure that there is no way that somebody um, gets unhidden. So for example, if you use a person detector model, there's a certain probability that you don't detect the person and then the person becomes visible. So you'd rather try to use a technology that's uh, secure and you can be kind of sure that it's still uh, protecting people. So typically you use motion detection for this. For real-time redaction, it's a different story though, because it's happening after the fact, it's a semi-automatic process. So you can be a little bit more adventurous and provide more features because the user can correct it anyway if there was a mistake. So there typically you use a technology. So it could be a person detector, it could be a vehicle detector, it could be even facial recognition that it identifies the same people. So the, the operator could just choose once and click on the person once that this person should not be uh, redacted and uh, and throughout the video facial recognition would make sure that this person is excluded excluded and everybody else would be redacted um, and again 
There, using person detection and, 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 and the facial recognition, you would add a tracker on top to track that those are the same people. But no matter the, te the, the technology, redaction is becoming more and more important in video surveillance, and it's being utilized more and more. Yes, for data protection purposes, for uh, local data protection law, but just, just because it's the right way to do it, right? If you want to share video, if you want to look at video, there is no need to intrude into people's privacy. You're really interested in the perpetrator that committed a crime. So that's it, very quick, an introduction on redaction. I hope you like it. If you did like it, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or all the other audio podcasts that we have out there. And otherwise, see you next time.